Hi guys, this is going to be the tutorial that's going to show you how to make this crocheted mesh twirly head cover. And for this project, all you're going to need is worst weight yarn, 4 ply for the US or 10 ply for the UK, and a 5 millimeter hook or a size H hook. And you can make any kind of flower as long as it's not too huge, or a bow. Uh, one lady mentioned a butterfly, anything like that. So you're going to need to make a flower of some kind. And I'm not going to be showing you uh, how to make the flower for this tutorial. I'm just going to show you how to make the actual head cover itself. So what you'll need is that and also a marker. And I have two sizes. I made one for my five-year-old daughter. So I say the size is about um, four years to eight years old, something like that. But for this tutorial, I'm going to be making um, an adult, an adult. So what you do to start is you want to chain 70. This is for the headband. So if 70 is way too big for you, then uh, maybe you I'm going to start with a little less. But for this tutorial, I'm going to be chaining 70 for the adult size. And if you want the pattern for the child size, then you can see the link underneath this video. And uh, you can look at the pattern there. So go ahead and chain 70. I'll see you back here in a moment. Okay, once you have your chain of 70, make sure that it's not twisted. Then you can fold it up like this, and each stitch has three um, pieces of yarn, the top and the bottom loop, and then the middle. So what I want you to do for this first connection is to go under two of them. So you have two stitches at the top and one at the bottom. I want you to single crochet. I should say slip stitch, sorry. I want you to slip stitch. Just like that to make your ring. Now in the second chain here, the one that you didn't slip stitch in, I want you to do a single crochet. This time you're only gonna be going through one show you here. We're only going through the top loop leaving the other two at the bottom now. I'm also going to be working over this small tail here. So you want to be doing one single crochet using that top loop only all the way around and when you get to the end you should have 69 stitches. You should lose one in this and what you want to do is go in through this first connection area, grab another color of yarn, and you can use it to mark your first stitch. So just continue to do this. Don't uh, single crochet so tightly. It's okay if it uh, twists a little bit. As it gets larger, it will um, straighten itself out some. So continue that around. I'll see you back here in a moment. Okay, I'm getting to the last stitch here. It's kind of um, a weird stitch. You almost want to skip it and go into this one, but don't do that. Make sure you get this last stitch. And count your stitches. Make sure that you have 69. And when you do, and you're back here again, then for round two, you want to single crochet one and the next two stitches. And what I'm going to do with this very first stitch of mine is I'm going to go not just into the stitch, but down below. Down below the stitch. You see how they all have this loop that runs along the bottom. That's the stitch I'm going to use because as you can see 
it's not even here. So to better even it up, I want to go down, and I guess it's the one that's in my stitch marker that's below my first stitch here. I'm going to go into that first stitch and single crochet my first one there. It's going to help pull it up. See how it made it a little bit more even? So that's my first single crochet. And then my second single crochet, I'm just going to go into the stitch as normal. Now once you've got your first two single crochets, then I want you to do a single crochet decrease, which is just going in through the stitch and pulling up a loop. Then search your hook in the next stitch as well, pull up a loop. And then you want to draw your yarn through all three loops. Now you want to single crochet one in the next two stitches and then you want to do a decrease again. And you're going to repeat this for the entirety of the round putting one single crochet in the next two stitches and then doing a single crochet decrease. And at the end of this round you should have 52 stitches. I did my two single crochets and my single crochet decrease and at the very last two stitches of this round you will also need to do a single crochet decrease in order to get the 52 stitches that you need. Now you're back at the beginning again and for rounds three through five you're just going to be putting one single crochet in each stitch around. So if you want to move up your marker here to help remind you that this is your first stitch and your beginning of your three rows go ahead. If not, then you can just count one, two, and then three, four, five. You need a total of five rows. So for the next three rounds, just put one single crochet in each stitch around and you should still have 52 stitches. Okay, I'm at the end of round five. And now for round six, you want to chain one and then go right into your first stitch of the round and double crochet into that first stitch. And then chain one, skip one stitch, and then the next stitch put a double crochet. And you will want to repeat this until you have 17 double crochets. Simply going to chain one, skip a stitch, and then in the next stitch, do a double crochet. Chain one, skip a stitch, and then in the next stitch, do a double crochet. So you have 17 double crochets. Remember, this is your very first double crochet. It goes from the single crochet right to the double crochet. So keep that in mind. So I have one, two, three, four. I'm going to continue until I have a total of 17. Just chain one, skip a stitch, double crochet. Okay, just about done. I just want to make sure that I have 17. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Okay. So I just got done with my seventeen. I haven't chained one yet. I'm going to do that now. I'm going to chain one and turn. Now you have the back facing you. Now you want to yarn over and double crochet into this first double crochet. And chain one. You're going to be doing the same thing you did last round double crochet, chain one. It's, you're going to be working though only in the tops of the double crochet. So double crochet, chain one, 
move over to the next double crochet and then the top of that stitch you want to put a double crochet then again chain one move over to the next double crochet do a double crochet, chain one and then just continue to do this all the way down till you get to your last double crochet and I'll see you back here okay I just double crocheted into my last double crochet and again you want to chain one and turn and then in your very first space put a double crochet most people will complain that you're supposed to chain two at the beginning but I don't like to do that I would rather chain one and elongate my stitch from the side because it just doesn't show up as much by doing that but it's up to you so once you get your double crochet into your previous double crochet again you'll be chaining one and working a double crochet in your double crochet to this direction double crochet, chain one, move to your next double crochet you're going to be doing the exact same thing that you did last round and you're going to repeat this until you have six rows like this so you've already completed one, two full ones, you're starting on your third so just keep doing it until you have six rows of this double crochet mesh okay I just got done with my sixth row mesh and now I just want to turn my work over this is the headband part I know it kind of feels a little weird you can always put a border around here if you like if you're more advanced you can put a, a single crochet reverse crab stitch on here or something like that but when you wear it it definitely it'll stretch it out so anyway now that you're done with your six crochet mesh rows and you're at the end of your row here you want to chain 50 so go ahead and chain 50 and I will see you back here in a moment Okay, once you have your chain of 50 done, okay, I'm going to show you how to make the twirls with this lighter color since my color has run dark. So, what you do to make the twirls is after you have your chain of 50, you want to count three chains down from the hook, and in the third chain from the hook, you want to put four double crochets. two, three, and four. This first one you always do four double crochets because this chain two on the end will count as your fifth. From here into the rest of the stitches you'll put five double crochets into the same stitch. I recommend doing this for at least 12 stitches or until you have at least five, you know, little twirls. One, two, three, four, and then five. At least five little twirls. But you can make them only four or six. It's up to you. So I have four and then five. Double crochets worked in the same stitch. So. I did this for a total of 12 stitches, so this is one, two, so now for my third, third stitch, you'll put five double crochets. And you want to continue this for a total of 12 stitches, putting five double crochets in each stitch. So there's my third, so here's my fourth stitch. And just continue to put five double crochets until you have 12 stitches done and I'll see you back here in a moment okay when you're done and as you go you can keep twisting it to do your twirl 
and we have five rows of twirls here. What you want to do is go into the next stitch and slip stitch. Chain one and catch a yarn, leaving enough of a tail to be worked in with a tapestry needle because you don't want to have any tails hanging out the back. And how I hide this tail is I will thread my tapestry needle. I'll find the top of my twirl here. And this is where it lays down flat. I'll go down into the center of my twirl and come out the or the points. And then I just pull my tail through. And then you want to pull out your twirl and then cut your yarn on the end of that twirl. And then now you can make your twirl nice and pretty again. And there you go. That's how you make the twirl on the end of your your chain 50. So when you're ready to reattach your next to your next uh, area, you're always going to be skipping one double crochet and going into the next. So you're only going to be putting a twirl every other one. So here, then here, then here. You'll always be skipping one in between. So to be able to hide your tails what you want to do is when you create your slip knot, you want to create it a little bit farther down so that this tail can be hidden later with a tapestry needle. And what you want to do is I usually have the inside facing me because see this is how you would put it on. So I have the inside facing me and I find my next double crochet that I need to attach it to which would be this one. I go into the top, stitch, and then I just slip stitch my color on like that. See, you have this tail that you'll be able to work in up through the mesh, your double crochet row here, to hide it. And then again, you want to chain 50. Six, seven. Anyway, so I showed you how to hide the tail for your twirls. Just want to show you real quick. When you get done with your twirl and whatnot, I just I feed it down through this double crochet row. Just like that. And I pull it through. And then I will pull it back because you can guarantee somebody else is going to pull it and then pull it down just a little bit get my scissors and I cut the excess and that's how you'll hide your tails from here every time always make sure that you leave a little extra yarn before you make your slip knot and then you're going to be making your twirl just like you did chain 50 then make your twirl on every end and remember you're always going to be attaching every other one. You're always going to have one double crochet in between each chain 50 in your twirl. So you continue to do that all the way down and you should have one here on the very end just like you had one on this very end. So you'll have one ending on this one as well. So continue to do that and I'll see you back here when you get done. Okay, once you have all of your little twirls done you want to lay your project out, keeping these chains from being twisted as much as you can. Also, you want it to be facing with the right side out, so the band part of it is, uh, the loose part is down. Because you want to put this flower or whatever bow on the back. So, you have it all like this, back out a little, then choose a flower, this is just a flower I already had made. So, 
once you've got your flower made, you just want to get one of the bottom stitches like this. Just grabbing one of the loops, attaching my yarn to it, my slip stitching. Okay, you want to chain five, three, four, five, because you want it to be able to grab all of your chains uh, and not be too loose so that the chains fall, but you still want to be able to move them so you don't want to actually attach them to the chains. So what I do is I just simply chain five like this. Then I will get my chains about halfway. So halfway between the mesh and the twirls. Get my flower here. And I will get my flower laid on top of it with my chain underneath and I'll flip it over do this. See my chain is on this side and all I want to do is simply slip stitch on back onto my flower again the opposite here's where I attached it so I just want to do it on the other side to keep the flower in the middle and I'm just going to slip stitch onto the other side of the flower to close my chain. Then chain one and pull your yarn. And then you can kind of twist it back around. You can see your chains here. And now you can adjust by pulling the chains tighter if you want. And then hide your tail back into the flower. And there you go. That is how you make one of these crocheted mesh twirly head covers. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and that it was easy to follow. Please don't forget to like and share this video and please don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching.